Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to have a look at the cutest little Max Sutok telescope you ever saw. This is the Sar Blue Max 60 telescope. It comes in at least three different varieties. This one is the least expensive. This goes for about $120. It's on a tabletop mount uh, and it's, there's no finder with it. This is pretty much all you get. Both of these are a little bit more expensive. They're about 160. This one comes on a full length, full height tripod, um, and it has a finder. This one is on a little Dobsonian mount, and it, is, it also has a finder. The most unique and captivating thing about this scope is the fact that it has a little removable, sort of a hood. This is a pretty good quality plastic, but it's very unusual to see a removable lid like that on any kind of a telescope. At this end here we have a star diagonal. This is uh, held in with a couple of screws like so. This will accept standard inch and a quarter eyepieces but it only comes with this one and this uh, is a 20 millimeter which if you calculate it gives you a power of roughly 37 power. And that's a pretty high power. Uh, and here's what's going on in this. Up here in the front, up here you have a, a lens-like element. It's called a corrector. And the light comes in here through the corrector, comes back and strikes the primary mirror. This is the first mirror here. And that's got a mirror surface on it. That's a reflecting surface. And then... It bounces up to this. There's another reflection inside here that reflects the light back down through here, through this tube here. This is just an empty tube here. Just empty space going back here to the diagonal. This is the prism diagonal and into the eyepiece. All of that is pretty cool and instructive for a kid to learn about that. That's maybe why this is marketed for kids. There are some downsides to that though, and that is that it, you really don't want a kid in there with their greasy fingers touching that mirror or this uh, corrector plate. You don't want any of that stuff happening. You don't want them sticking anything inside there either. So that's kind of a negative. Let's have a look at these mounts. This has got to be one of the cheapest. Uh, man, this thing is horrible. That's got to be one of the cheapest little tripods I've ever seen. That's about as cheap as you can get. Uh, and it is really tough to use. You can't... Remember, you're trying to use this at 37 power, which is a lot of magnification in a small package. You've got to have a nice, stable mount. At the minimum, it needs to be nice and stable. This is jerky and just terrible. Just absolutely terrible. This one... Although it's up higher, it's up off the ground, is the same story. It's very, uh, uh, how to say, I guess I would say sticky. It, it just doesn't want to move smoothly. It's, it's got plastic, cheap plastic bearings in there. It is just horrible. It's impossible. You aim it at something, you move a little bit, and you're gone. It's com you'll never find it again. It's gone. So that's also a terrible amount. This one actually works pretty well. This is a pretty decent little, this is what we call a Dobsonian style, Altaz mount. Nice, pretty, relatively heavy base. They've got a clever arrangement where they've made the legs expand out. <laughs> it's cute as can be. But, um, does it work? Barely. This thing is usable, but just barely. You have to have a, a delicate touch, and it's really, it would be challenging for a kid. It's challenging for an experienced adult like me to operate this thing and aim it and get it all lined up. The finder is very low quality, um, and the mount is, is good, but you're trying to operate this thing at 37 power. It's just a bit much. Let's compare that with this one. This is basically the same idea. This is also a real cheap telescope. You've probably seen these. This is 76 millimeter. This is a Newtonian. Now the advantage of this telescope is it's got a much shorter focal length. This is 750 millimeters squeezed into this little package. This one's only 200 millimeters. So 
You can use this with a reasonable eyepiece and uh, operate it at 15 power, which is very usable, very acceptable. Uh, it doesn't have a finder, but also because of the low power, it serves as, as its own finder. It really doesn't need a finder. Finder is nice on, on this scope, but it's uh, not an absolute necessity. You can side up along the tube and get close enough and then find it just by wiggling around to find it. So it's not bad. Now, the optics on these scopes, these are um, spherical optics, so they're not good. <laughs> you can see the moon, you can see the moon has craters and it's not bad, and you can see Jupiter and see that Jupiter has moons. But you won't resolve any great detail. The resolution on this scope is actually much higher. This is a beautiful, optically a beautiful little scope. The little um, SAR blue is really, really good, high quality optics. But the mounting on this particular version is what I would call barely acceptable. The finder is barely acceptable. This is a barely acceptable telescope. It'll give you some nice views, but you have got to be patient, and it's not for a kid to operate by themselves. If, if I could persuade you, I would like to persuade you to get a larger telescope, larger aperture. Orion makes a four inch with a parabolic mirror. Don't get the one with the spherical mirror. Get the one with the parabolic mirror. It's worth the extra few dollars, $150. If you've got a few extra bucks, <laughs> this is quite a few, $250 buys you the astronomy with, uh, Astronomers Without Borders, five inch. I have a review on that scope. It's wonderful. It's absolutely uh, the best beginner telescope you can get. Highly recommended. So uh, check that out. If you absolutely have to have a little Mac Sutov telescope, don't buy this one. Buy this one. This is from Spectrum Telescopes, uh, Spectrum Optics. It's a 70 millimeter, so it's a little bit bigger aperture. That's better. That's good. It's got a uh, red dot finder, which is far superior to this cheesy finder that they've got on this one. The most important thing is that they managed to make a mount that is very, very, very good for this little scope. Wonderful. As a matter of fact, a dead giveaway is they put a big telescope on this same mount. And... Um, it's always good to have a telescope that's over-mounted rather than under-mounted. This telescope is under-mounted. It's shaky, it's wobbly, it's great optically, but you can't see anything because you can't find it. You can't, it's shaky, it's just terrible. This one will work for you. This one actually works beautifully. Here's how this one works. You got a clutch there, tighten down the clutch, and then this does your slow motion. This is extremely well made. So you loosen it up, you can go anywhere you want. And then you have uh, slow motions right there. Lock it down, you got slow motion. Same kind of thing over here. Here's your lock, you move it around. Really nice, look at how nice and smooth that is. Lock it down and then you've got slow motion. Believe me, with this focal length, you really need to have these slow motions. You just can't get away without it. It's also got three eyepieces, not just one. This is about $180. The cheapest version of this is $120. The one I would recommend is get the one on the tabletop mount. Uh, that's about uh, $160, I think. So it's only $20 more to get this one. If you're interested in a version of this scope that's suitable for kids, be sure to check out my review of the Newtoni 50 millimeter Newtonian reflector. I hope this review of the SAR Blue Max 60 is helpful. Thank you for watching.